Hey guys, Pankaj here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So from today onwards, I'm going to make a video on statistics topic and whatever topic I'm going to cover that will be good enough for the project or application you're going to develop in the data science. Okay, so remember guys, the statistics is very vast topic and you will not be able to cover 100% and covering 100% is also not required because a lot of uh, topics will be there under the statistics topic which might not be relevant for data science also okay so only heavily used or frequently used topics are covered under this and you will become master on that uh, once you cover all the statistics video uh, whatever i'm going to make okay so uh, let's see uh, all the topics here so what is agenda under statistics so we will see what is statistics why and where we need statistics and the various types of statistics important topics to be covered under statistics. This is what I was talking. Okay, so not 100%, but whatever is heavily or frequently used topics will be covered. Okay, so first we'll see what is statistics. So statistics is the science concern with developing and studying methods for collecting, analyzing, interpreting, and presenting empirical data. Okay, so you have seen my EDA videos, right? So what exactly we did there? So we collected the data uh, either from the third party or from the Google we downloaded. And later we started analyzing and we did a lot of data cleaning. Okay, so under data cleaning also, you would have seen I applied a lot of statistical method like mean, median, mode for filling the blank values, right? So that comes under analyzing and uh, cleaning the data, okay? And interpreting and presenting. So interpret like, okay, we were seeing like, uh, uh, let's talk about the mode, right? So we were seeing like whatever data sets are present, like which is very highly or uh, very uh, frequently uh, coming value under uh, categorical data, right? So what we can interpret. So some of the value which is coming very frequently, we can see like this is most of the data are coming under this particular category, right? And if some numerical data is there, then uh, we were doing KD plot, right? So how, or histogram plot, right? So we were seeing like, uh, most of the frequent values are coming to, let's say, if you talk about Titanic data set, right? We were talking about the age feature, right? So under age, we were seeing mostly youngsters who are boarded in the uh, Titanic and their age was close to 25 to 30 uh, age, 30 years is correct. So that's what comes under interpreting and presenting empirical data, empirical data. So what comes under presenting? So you will be doing a lot of visualization, right? After data cleaning, we used KD plot, histogram plot, distribution plot, count plot, bar plot, scatter plot, box plot, violin plot. Okay, so those comes under presenting. So that is what we are going to do under statistics. Okay, so we'll see uh, again with a lot of examples and a lot of uh, data which we'll be taking either from third party or we'll be generating some random data set and based on that, we will be applying various statistical methods. Okay, so why and where we need statistics? This is very important topic guys. Okay, and very important to know why exactly we use and where exactly we are going to use. So let's talk about why. So statistical knowledge helps you use the proper methods to collect the data, employ the correct analysis and effectively present the results, which we already saw, correct? The statistics is a crucial process behind how we make discoveries in science, make decisions based on data and make predictions. So the last line clearly tells uh, what we did under ADA, right? So what is telling make decisions based on data so what we did we took the age column of the titanic data set okay and a lot of values were missing right so we decided after looking at the value we saw okay uh, most of the person who boarded they were belonging to 25 to 30 age right so we decided okay those whatever is missing let's go ahead and fill the median of those age value and just fill the nn values okay so that's how we read the data, we saw the data and we made the decision to go ahead with the mean or median of the data and fill the NN values. Okay, so that's what, uh, that, that's why we are using statistical here, statistical methods. So that answers your why factor. Okay, now what is where factor? So statistician people who do statistics are particularly concerned with, read this line very carefully, okay, concerned with determining how to draw reliable conclusions about large groups and general events from the behavior and other observable characteristic of small samples. Okay, so whenever you talk about the large data, right? So we'll be having very large population data and from that population data, we will be picking only few samples. Okay, because not every data we will be able to analyze because let's talk about the Indian population, right? It's 1.3 million, right? 
Okay, so we we will not be let's say you are going to collect some data from each people, right? It is going to take ages to collect the data. What will we will take maybe one lakh people data, maybe fifty thousand, and do some analysis. Okay, and we will do some infer, or uh, we will draw some conclusion based on those samples. So that's what this slide tells, determining how to draw reliable conclusions about large groups and general events from the behavior and other observable characteristics of small samples. Okay. So these small samples represent the portion of the large group. That's what I told. From population, we'll pick few samples. That is the sample, okay, from large group or a limited number of instances of a general phenomena, okay. So that's that's what answers your wear factor. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so when you talk about statistics, there are two kind of statistics: descriptive and inferential. So let's see what is descriptive. So descriptive statistics uses data that provides a description of the population, either through numerical calculation or graph or table. So this is what we have been seeing uh, in the EDA part. So we got whole large population data, and from there we were drawing the conclusion, right? By applying mean, median, mode, or doing various statistics, right? That were your descriptive study, which describes your data. Okay, so again, you take the age column and you just read all the age value of each observation, right? So what you, uh, what conclusion you drawn? Conclusion tells most of the people who boarded they were belonging to 25, 30 years. That is what describing your data set. Okay, by looking at the data. Okay, similarly we had uh, let's say uh, passenger class, right? So that is categorical value. So under passenger class, when you a look at the data you were seeing like most of the passenger who boarded they were from third class okay so that's what once you start looking into the data you can draw the conclusion by either visualizing or by applying the statistical methods on them. okay so next is inferential statistics so what it is inferential statistics makes inference and prediction about population based on a sample of data taken from population Okay, so this is also very important factor. Why? Because as I mentioned, let's say you are going to do some analysis on Indian population, right? So as I mentioned, it's a very huge population. So it is practical impossible to take the sample from each and every Indian, right? So rather what we'll do, we'll take the data from out of 1.3 million, we'll take maybe let's say 50,000 or one lakh or maybe two lakh samples, right? From the sample, we are going to infer from data which most likely going to talk about the overall population of the data. Okay, so from the sample, you are going to infer or you are going to draw a conclusion about the population of data. That is what is your inferential statistics. Okay, so under inferential and statistics, a lot of methods are there, which we'll see later. So how you can draw, what, what are the criteria to select samples and from sample, what and all statistical method you can apply, which will give not exactly 100% accurate, but at least 99 or 98% accuracy it will give and it will talk about the population of the data. Okay, so some classical example, let's say how we infer, right? So you talk about the Indian politics. Okay, so let, let's say Indian election, right? So you would have seen in the news channel, they go for exit polling, right? So under exit polling, what they do? They don't talk to each and every Indian why, to which, which party they have voted, right? Either Congress or BJP. So what they will do, they will talk to maybe uh, 50,000 or maybe 20,000 uh, person. And based on that, whatever data they collected, they will try to infer, okay, most of the population is going or they have voted to BJP or they have voted to uh, Congress. Okay, that's how they infer. That comes under inferential statistics. Every new channel does that. Okay, now similarly, you talk about some drug test, right? So let's say some new, let's forget about new. You talk about recently uh, COVID vaccine, whatever they have developed, right? So when COVID, was there they they started developing a vaccine right so vaccine you would have also known right the moment they launched before that they would have not tested in every indian or every american citizen or maybe whole world population right they took some samples and they thought okay uh, this vaccine is like almost 95 or 98 percent effective and it is going to work for overall the population correct that's how they took some sample and based on that they infer this vaccine is going to work for all our population Okay, so inferential statistics is major role whenever they, they are going to draw some conclusion uh, from the population to a small sample. Okay, so let's see what are the types under descriptive statistics. 
we have two major type one is measure of central tendency and one is measure of variability okay so under central tendency we'll see mean median or we have already seen right what what exactly those and why we use under statistics so we are going to see again uh, through some formula and how the value comes and where exactly we are going to use it and why we, we are going to use it okay so under measure central tendency we'll see mean median mode and variability we'll see range mode standard deviation okay so don't worry i'm not going to talk every bits and pieces uh, in today's video so this is just introductory level video and we are going to talk from next video okay so types under descriptive statistics so what it does so under this we have two categories one is measure of central tendency so let's see what it is so measure of central tendency is also known as summary statistics that is used to represent the center point or a particular value of a data set or sample set okay in statistics there are three common measures of central tendency as shown below so one is like mean very famous and i mean uh, very frequently we are we are using in like day to day basis or in every eda you would have seen right i have used mean median as well as mode okay so what is mean it measures the average of all values sample set i'm just going to read the definition and later we'll see everything with the help of formula and example okay what is median it is measure of central value of a sample set in this data set it order from lowest to highest basically you have to do sorting before calculating the median okay now mode is it is the value most frequently arrived in the sample set okay so it's mostly uh, mode uh, mode function we use whenever you have lot of categorical data okay so it is value most frequently arrived in sample set the value repeated most of the time or the value which is coming very frequently or highly occurred value will be talking about the central set of data okay and that is what is mode let's see the next one so another one we have measure of variability so we talked about the central tendency now how the data is varying so let's talk about the mean from mean what about other data how much it is varying from the mean that's where you uh, talk about measure of variability okay so measure of variability is also known as measure of dispersion like how your data is dispersed okay how it is shifted how much it is shifted from median or the mode or the mean okay so measure of dispersion and is used to describe variability in a sample or population in statistics there are three common measure of variability as shown below so one is range so it is given measure of how to how to spread apart values in sample data set sample set or data set okay so range is what uh, their maximum value minus minimum value okay so let's say you have value between 1 to 10 so what is their range 10 minus 1 that is 9 okay now next is variance so it simply describes how much a random variable differs from expected value <clears throat> it is also computed as a square of deviation okay so this formula i have put for your reference and i am going to show under uh, once we start talking about the program right so also how we can derive this formula and you don't have to remember because it, it is just for your information everything is available in the form of function okay so next is dispersion so it is measure of dispersion of a set of data from its mean this is also known as standard deviation how much it is deviated from the mean okay how much it dispersed from the mean or basically from central part of the data what about other data how much it is dispersed how it is varying how much it is varying all those measures comes under variability okay let's talk about the next so inferential statistics so now we have seen so far all descriptive statistics right so measure of variability measure of central tendency now we are going to talk about inferential statistics so what is what it is inferential statistics makes inference and prediction about population based on a sample of data taken from population okay so classical example i told right exit polling and predict like which party they have voted most correct and drug test which drug is like whether drug is going to be effective for population or not okay that comes under inferential statistics from population they are taking the small sample it generalizes a large data set and implies probabilities to draw a conclusion okay so as i mentioned from population take a sample 
do a lot of uh, statistical calculation and draw a conclusion whether it is really going to be effective or going to be applied for the large population or not. It is simply used for explaining meaning of descriptive stats. Okay. So there are many ways to perform inferential statistics. However, some highly used practices are listed below. Okay, so one is like hypothesis testing. We'll see its theory and what is the formula, what are various thumb rule uh, to perform a hypothesis testing. Okay, so let's read about it, what it is. Hypothesis testing involves checking that your samples repeat the results of your hypothesis or proposed explanation. So basically you will have problem statement under that they will be proposing some statement okay or proposing some explanation okay so that is your result of your hypothesis the aim is to rule out the possibility that a given result has occurred by chance so they would have given a result let's say you have taken drug test for a sample right so they are telling drug test is effective uh, over 98 percent of the population that is your conclusion from the data set okay so we can take this as a null hypothesis and what is whatever what is alternate hype hypothesis like that 98 percent it is not it may be effective less than 90 percent or maybe 99 percent one of them you can choose as a alternate hypothesis so you need to rule out whether it is really 98 percent effective or not so we'll see various examples and you know calculation then you'll understand what it is so sometimes it becomes very confusing and until you try various examples and see <clears throat> What are the underlying formulas under this? Then, then it will make your life easy to understand hypothesis testing. <clears throat> so the, the aim is to rule out the possibility that a given result has occurred by chance, a topical or it's a typical. Okay, I'll modify this. There is some typo. A typical example of this is the clinical trial I told about the vaccine or drug test, right? Uh, for the COVID-19 vaccine, since it is impossible to carry out trials on an entire population, we carry out numerous trials on several random representative samples instead. Okay. Next is confidence interval. The confidence interval is a range of values that is likely to include a population value with a certain degree of confidence. It is often expressed as a percentage whereby a population means lies between an upper and lower interval. <clears throat> Okay, this also we'll see based on normal distribution using bell curve, like how, how the confidence interval varies and under what percentage your most of the population will come. Okay, so this we'll see based on the graph. Regression and correlation analysis. So regression and correlation analysis are both techniques used for observing how two or more sets of variables relate to one another. Okay, so basically we'll be drawing a lot of correlation so this basically let me just show one example here i hope okay i'll show this just a minute we yeah, i'll take whiteboard okay so Yeah, so what basically we are talking under correlation, right? So let's say you have given a lot of values, right? So we'll have so many graphs. Okay, so let's say you have one x-axis and one y-axis. And here you have a lot of samples. Okay. And here you will have some samples which looks like this after plotting or x and y-axis. And here some samples will be there. Okay. So whenever you plot a regression line, right? So let me just draw something. Yeah. So let's say you're drawing a line. This is nothing but your regression line. So I'll be talking about the linear regression and all. So you'll understand how this line to be drawn. So basically we have one formula, right? Y equal to MX plus. See, this is the formula for the line. Okay. So based on this formula, we can draw a line. Okay. And here you will see Whenever X is increasing, right? Y is decreasing. Whenever X is increasing, Y is increasing. So this is highly correlated value because the moment X is increases, Y is decreasing. Okay. Whenever X is, uh, sorry, X is decreasing, I draw wrong value. Okay. 
x is increasing, y is decreasing. This correct. And here x is increasing, and y is also increasing. Okay. So this basically, when both are increasing together, that is nothing but positive correlated or highly correlated. And this is also highly correlated, but in the form of negative. So one is going up, another one is going down. And here you don't see x is increasing, y does doesn't have. X is increasing, but y is y stands flat, right? So here, no correlation, no relation, I mentioned. Okay, so these kind of uh, uh, statistical calculation also we will be seeing under that category, under regression analysis. Okay, so let me remove this presentation. Let me share. Okay, so let me open that slide now. Okay, so whatever I just explained, right, that comes under regression and correlation analysis. So we'll be seeing a lot of formula involved in this. What kind of other uh, correlation we can infer, and what are the various formula we can apply and see the or draw the conclusion. Okay, so that comes under this. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, other topic which we are going to discuss under statistics, there are a lot of topics, so a lot of small, small videos going to come, and I'm going to explain everything with alpha example. And uh, proper theory I'll explain along with proper examples with data set. And that, that's why I'm telling, right? You will become master in the statistics once you follow all those videos, okay? So we'll see mean, median, mode, percentile, and quantiles. What is IQR, interquartile range? What is median absolute devi deviation? Histogram and introduction of probability density function. Univariate analysis using PDF, CDF, box plot with Whisker. We have already seen box plot, but we'll see more detail or more, th more theory behind box plot. And what are Whiskers? What is violent plot? This we have already seen, but how we can draw conclusion from violent plots? Okay. Gaussian normal distribution and its PDF, CDF of Gaussian normal distribution. So we have a lot of different kind of distribution. Gaussian normal, normal distribution. Okay, binomial distribution. We'll see each example and their CDF. Symmetric distribution is skewness and kurtosis. Okay, so this also we'll see. Then standard normal variate and standardization. So we'll see some data which is not normal distributed, right? So how we can make it standard standardized value or how we can make the value in the form of normal distributed uh, values. KD plot also we have seen, but what is KD? What is kernel density estimation? What is the formula and how it helps to <clears throat> draw the conclusion from the data set? <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we'll see sampling distribution, central limit theorem. <clears throat> QQ plot, how to test it <clears throat> if random variable is a normality distributed or not. Okay, that will come in the QQ plot. <clears throat> then we'll see HFCU inequality, discrete and continuous and uniform distribution. How to randomly sample data points? What is Bernoulli and binomial distribution? Log normal distribution, Box Cox transform. Okay, what what is covariance? Pearson coalition coefficient. So we'll see a lot of coefficient and uh, different coalition, right? They each coalition is having some positive facts and negative facts, right? And some problems are there, so how to work on from those problems. So there will be separate coalition like experiment, rank coalition, coalition versus causation. <clears throat> how to use coalition, what is confidence interval, and hypothesis testing with original hypothesis and their p value. Under this, you'll see a lot of various examples how you can apply hypothesis testing on that particular data set. Okay, so these are the topic. This is not only limited to this, I will be covering a little more topic which is not mentioned here. So as we go along with the video, right, or different, different topics, we'll get to know some more topics. I'll cover the video on that also. Okay, guys, so that's all about this. This is the introduction about the statistics, what and all I'm going to cover and how it is going to help you in machine learning algorithm also. So once you understand this properly, right, you can easily work on any kind of machine learning algorithm. Because under algorithm, we pass a lot of parameter, right? And each parameter, either it is related to statistical, uh, some descriptive uh, statistics or inferential statistics. So those parameters you need to fine tune and make your model best, okay? So we are going to see all those things detail. 
uh, with the help of different different data sets okay guys so yeah stay tuned for the next video and i'm going to start with mean mean mode and little theory behind that how you can uh, calculate it how you can draw it and what exactly it tells about your data okay that's how we are going to learn for each topic okay guys so that's all from my side today and see you in the next video thank you so much bye bye